again, Stitchers. Welcome back to my channel, Pages and Stitches. That's spelled Pages, the number three stitches, both here and on Instagram. My name is Kelly, and I'm stoked to be bringing you my next update for 2024. Today is Sunday, March 3rd, and this is my floss tube update number 28. So almost to 30, which is really cool. <laughs> And uh, today's update is my February update, the, the stitching that I was able to accomplish in the month of February. And I'm always very excited to share that progress with you because you guys are awesome and it's nice to have uh, friends with similar interests, right? Because then you can commiserate over the, the successes and the failures or the perceived failures, right? It's just cross-stitching, it's not that serious. It's just a fun hobby. <laughs> So um, let me just start out by saying a massive thank you to everybody who's here and who's checking out this video. If you are new here, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I so appreciate you being curious enough to click on the video and give me a try. If somebody has sent you here from their recommendation, thanks to them as well, because that's very kind. Um, and then if you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. Good to see you, friend. I'm glad you're here again. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with me as often as you do. Um, and please never leave. <laughs> so last month I announced giveaway winners for um, the three giveaways that I was doing to celebrate my floss tube anniversary, my YouTube anniversary, really. And then um, I did that on my Quilters Corner as well. All of my giveaway winners have reached out to me and claimed their prize. I've sent everything in the mail already and all of the winners have received their, their gifts. So that went smoothly. I was not anticipating <laughs> everybody to reach out to me as soon as they did and we got everything squared away. And I was super worried about it too because I, if you're unfamiliar, I live near Houston. Most if not all of my mail is routed through there and Houston's had this weird thing happening with their mail system because a lot of the big mail processing centers have been updating equipment and that's led to like a massive delay in both shipping and receiving mail. So I was really worried that, you know, people weren't going to get their things, but everybody has told me that they've received their stuff. So I'm relieved that that, that has gone over without a hitch. So I mentioned my quilter's corner. As you can see behind me, I do also quilt. It's one of my, my great loves. I actually started quilting before I started cross stitching. And um, I like to do quilter, what I call my quilter's corner updates. They are a similar style to my floss tube updates, just a vlog style kind of video of all things quilting related. So if you are curious about quilting, if you are a quilter yourself, if you're just, you know, nosy about what's going on on the wall behind me, definitely go check out that video that will be posted after this one. So yeah, check it out if you if you would like to. I would love for you to. I would love for any and all quilters and cross stitchers to be my friends. So as per usual, I'm going to start with my reading update. The pages of pages and stitches is representative of my third passion. I have cross stitching, I have quilting, and then pages is reading. So um, I just like to do a quick rundown of all the books I read the previous month so that if you're curious, you can see what kind of books I like. So the first book I got my hands on was this one here. This is By a Thread by Lucy Score. Lucy Score is one of my favorite authors. Uh, this is a standalone novel, so it's super cute and fun. And then the uh, rest of the books that I read, I will have to insert pictures for because I read them on my Kindle app. Uh, the first two uh, were by the same author, Grace McGinty. I read The Daymakers and Paper Heart. Both are standalone novels with two very different vibes, but I liked the author, so I read them both. And then I followed that up with Scorch by Gemma Weir. This is the second novel in um, this particular series that she's writing. Okay, so um, I felt like... February was just like a slow stitching month for me. I was talking about this on, on Zoom last night, actually. I had a Zoom with Carla being crafty and I was telling him like, I don't know, I just felt very uninspired most of the month. 
I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that spring has definitely arrived here in Texas. It's 80 degrees today on March 3rd. Uh, and I've spent half the month either sneezing my brains out or in an antihistamine coma and neither of which are conducive to creativity. So <laughs> I've just been like, bleh. but I mean, I still, I still did get progress. I think, I mean, truly the only person who really sets a benchmark for your success is yourself. Right. So I need to be better about just giving myself a little bit of grace, but I still feel like I probably could have done more. Oh, well, I mean, there's always next month, right? <laughs> so all that to say, you know, I still have stitching, but I wish it would have been more, you know? Oh, well, that's okay. You know, some months we don't do as much and some months we do. And truthfully, it's all about listening to your body, right? If I was tired, I took a nap. If I was sneezy, I took some antihistamines. If I was X, Y, and Z, I did what I wanted to do for that. So in 2024, we are listening to our bodies, people. And my body was telling me that cross-stitching wasn't a massive priority last month, but I still got plenty of progress to show you. So let me just shut up and show you, huh? So the first whip that I worked on is this one here. This is a cross-stitch kit by Riolis called Forest Calendar. And I started this as my new year, new start. Um, last year, I did a Clouds Factory calendar stitch along. And I liked tracking kind of my progress through the year with that. So I decided to do it again. And this project, this year's pro project is um, this kit here. Uh, last time you saw it, it looked like this. The kit comes with a 14 count Ada. I switched it out for a 16 count blue whip ada the fabric came from the blue whip fabric came from a cross stitch store from like the 90s that no longer exists maybe a little bit later i don't know so if you like the color of the fabric unfortunately i can't link it down below but i'm sure you can get similar colors it's just like a like a mediterranean kind of slate blue color but the kit came with a um, natural, like a Rustico Ada, and I have used that plenty of times. It's actually in another one of the projects that I'm gonna show you. So I just kind of decided I wanted to switch it out for something a little bit more vibrant. Also, I don't stitch on 14 count so much anymore. Sometimes I, ha I have a couple of projects I still have it on, but for the most part, I prefer like a, a 16, 18 is my jam. But um, since this is the wool acrylic, blended thread, which is thicker. I didn't want to go down to an 18 and then struggle to pull the floss through the holes. So I just went down to a 16 count. So officially it is a 16 count blue whip Ada, two or three over one full cross. And here is where we are now. So last time I did my January block with this little owl in his pot of tea um and then this time for february we have these little lovebirds these little penguins and they are so stinking cute so this block actually took a decent amount of time because i mean most of the space is filled up with the birds and like the ice that they're sitting on so it's it was this was basically full coverage like a lot of a lot of stitches went into that tiny little block so but it, it ended up super cute. Um, they have little heart bubbles either coming out of their mugs or, you know, just floating around between them. And they're sitting on presumably a little, little ice berg. Um, there's little ripples in the water here. And then I did start putting in the leaves on the flowers that go between the, the blocks. I don't have any here, but there's, two sides there's leaves leave kind of back stitching on either side of the flowers so i finished all of that in here and then i did just the top part of those leaves around that side isn't it cute it's so cute i love it so next month for march we have spring coming we got a little bunny rabbit and a little butterfly and some sunshine so it looks like there's also either 
like snowflakes or um oh what do you call it? like you know how those when dandelions they go like puffy and white and then you blow on them they float through the air they almost look like that but they might be snowflakes i mean they're whatever you want them to be right so this is what next month's block will look like right in here and then i'll have the top row all done that one's a cute project it's fun and i i've said this before i don't mind at all working with the wool acrylic thread the, the blended thread um the only time it becomes irritating is because i lick my floss to get it through the needle the eye of the needle and every once in a while i'll have a little piece of fuzz i gotta but otherwise it's totally fine and it um the coverage is so good with a realist kit so if you've never given a realist kit a try by all means give it a try the next project that i worked on is this one right here this is called cross stitch tools and it is designed by a fellow floss tuber james the ph stitcher i will have his channel linked down below as well as his instagram i think if you message him on instagram he um will give you a link to to purchase this if you are interested and this is i think the first pattern he's designed very cute very pretty as you can see, it is all cross stitch related tools. And here's what it looked like the last time that you saw it. I am stitching this on an 18 count natural Ada, two over one full cross. I am, however, altering the color palette with James's blessing, by the way. He's talked about it in his videos before that he's kind of designed it so that uh, you can make your own choices about the colors that you use which is what i'm doing and then uh you can also like add or delete things as you see fit so i once i get down to this bottom part i'm gonna these are flossway bags i'm gonna take those out because i don't use flossway bags and i'm just gonna do another um skein of floss there and then the ort jar i'm gonna take out because i don't collect my orts I just throw them away. So <laughs> I'll probably duplicate the the heart needle minder. And here is where I got to. So um, a couple of things, obviously the color palette's different and I have switched out the uh, spool colors for actual metallic threads. These I believe are meant to be um, spools of Krynik. I'm actually using Petite Treasure Braid, but you get the point, right? Um, and then I've, you know, switched up the colors, just pulling random colors that I think are fun and bright. And then also um, adding my channel name here, Pages and Stitches, was, I believe that was Janet Jabber's idea. She commented that, I believe, I think it was her. You absolute angel, Janet, I miss you. Um, so I added that there because I thought that was brilliant. And then I kind of also added these fun little like backstitched doodles just in, in and around. So last time there was a little heart there. I've added a little star, a little lightning bolt, and a little sunshine. And I think that's super cute. So this pattern's super fun because it's so easy to like personalize and make your own, which I'm really enjoying doing. So I believe this is what you saw last time. And then I added these other two project bags, another skein of floss, these Krynik spools, and then little needle minders with the little backstitch needles on them. So cute. So this is going back in my um, stash of whips in rotation and the next time this comes out um i am right in this corner so i can get uh this hoop in and then these little um bobbins and start working my way this way yep so thank you again james for sending that to me i am really enjoying your pattern it's super easy to read and the symbols are nice and bright and i just love that you've made it so that we can have our have our own little artistic touch on it so the next whip that i worked on is this whip right here this is a kit from imaginating imaginating and it's called happy everything 
So this one is super fun. Uh, I am not a seasonal stitcher. I don't also decorate seasonally. Like I'll put up a Christmas tree, but that's about as seasonal as I get. Everything else, whether it's Halloween themed or holiday themed or spring themed, you know, whatever. If I made it and I like it, it stays up on my wall year round or shelf or wherever I have it because it makes me happy and I don't want to languishing in storage. So happy everything makes perfect sense to keep out year round because it has a year's worth of holidays on it. And I do intend to add more holidays to it. If you want more information on that, you can watch my, my whip parade that I did at the beginning of the year. And I kind of explain what other holidays I want to add, but I'll do that at the end. So this is what it looked like the last time that you saw it. Originally, the pattern had a 14 count natural Ada in it, and I switched it out for an 18 count beige Ada, and I'm stitching two over one full cross. And then here is where I got to. So it now says every instead of ever. I finished out the R. Um, Finished out the R and added the Y, and then I added all of this down here. Uh, last time I think I just had the sun and like part of the umbrella here. So now I have all this stuff here. So it looks like, you know, oh, you know what? I just realized I didn't add the stems. There's little green stems on the carrots. So I'll have to go back and add that. But this is a little, you know, garden springtime garden that's leading into summer with the sunshine and the beach and then the sailboat and then over here like right in here is a schoolhouse so we're starting to get into fall over here and that little back stitch right there that's meant to be there the the section of the y is meant to look like the branches of an apple tree and i just got one little <laughs> got one little apple tree branch right there <clears throat> Let me see if I can show you. There. So see, it's the Y is an apple tree, so I just got one of the little, one little teeny tiny branch stitched in. And see, that's what the tops of the carrots are supposed to look like. So I'll have to go back and add that before you see this again. <laughs> but yeah, it's coming along. It looks super cute. It's crazy how like this doesn't look like a lot of stitching which and truthfully it's it's not but there's so many color changes just in this tiny little section that it did kind of hold me up a little bit but that's okay because it's coming out super cute we've got our little sunflower carrots and then the little flowers there and then over here we have a bucket and a little um shovel in the sand with a beach umbrella and then a little sailboat in the background that is so cute. I love it so much. And then the floss in the kit is DMC and everything does have a number attached to it. So if I run out, I can go into my stash and try and color match the, the dye lots. And then when I'm finished with it, I can also give it away because the fabric numbers are there. So that way somebody can just use it as a pattern. So I like, I really appreciate whenever pattern design or kit designers do that, you know, dimensions. I'm looking at you for dropping, dropping the ball there. So the last whip that I worked on this month was my focus project for the year. And that is this one here. This is the Pointed Fifth by Long Dog Sampler. And I... I love working on this project because uh, the thing about long dogs is so there's so much, especially this one, there's so much symmetry in like the framework and everything. So it's very easy to get into a groove and then just like keep going without even looking at your pattern. Um, you just, you know, reference the other side of what you were working on. So here's what it looked like the last time that you saw it. I'm stitching this on a 32 count exotic orchid Lugana, two over two full cross. 
And the color palette is one that I uh, designed myself or chose myself from a picture, an inspiration picture on Instagram. And I have to say a massive thank you to everybody who leaves me just the nicest, kindest comments about how much they love the colors of this project. It makes me feel like whenever I first started working on it, before I really started to see it come together, I was a little bit nervous about kind of how it would look and how it would be received, but everybody says such nice things. And so I greatly appreciate your support <laughs> for that. So here is where we are now. So I didn't get as much done on it as I would have liked. Um, I just started this diamond and I didn't, the only thing that's left in the middle is the, the peacock. I'm assuming it's a peacock. It might be a goose. It's a bird in in the middle there um so i finished up up here and then i finished up this motif that was kind of on about like half done last time and then i got all the way to this other little heart so i just need to add that that was my intention was to finish at least the middle of that diamond and then maybe get started over here there's a little rabbit or like a hair that's jumping across right there and um I don't know, I was working on it. It was like every time I sat down a cross stitch, I just got sleepy. Either because of all of the allergy medication that I've been taking, or because of the fact that it just like relaxed me so much that I was just tired. So I listened to my body and I would take a nap, which meant unfortunately that I didn't get quite as far on this project as I would have liked to, but that's okay. There are no deadlines, just what I set for myself, so. Oh well, always next month, right? So yeah, there we go. And with finishing out this diamond, I actually have my first official page finish. I'm gonna hold it back so you don't see it, but that is 100% highlighted because it's done. Which is, that was a nice feeling whenever, whenever I completed that page. So as I work my way across the top, because this whole row is done. So as I work my way across the top, I'll have multiple page finishes, which is a cool thought. I'm working on, obviously, you know, I'm a physical copy, not from a pattern keeper or anything. So I've kind of got to go back and forth. as pages overlap, I kind of have to go, you know, back and forth from one page to the other to see everything. But once I get all the way across here, those pages will be all done and I won't have to touch them anymore. So this is the bird that I was talking about. I don't know. It could be a swan. It could, it could be an eagle. It could be a goose. It could be some other bird that I can't even think of. I have no idea, but that's what goes there. <laughs> and then over here, there's that little jumping bunny. And then, so next time you see this, um, I wanna get those two things done. And then I'll probably come back down here to work on this next little opening that has, let's see what's in here. We got a stork with a fish in its mouth. I think that's a stork or maybe a pelican. I don't know birds. Clearly, I don't know my birds. <laughs> it's, it's probably a pelican. <laughs> and then a little fish in its mouth, a little rabbit down there. And then there's little like butterflies or bugs of some sort. Yeah. So that's what I think I'm going to be working on next time. And then I mean, we're getting closer to the middle there. That's pretty cool. I like it. And then I just want to, so as you can see up in the top, I've got that gold diamond thread in the, the chevron looking border. And I love the effect of that. Try to get the shimmer to come through. I think that looks super pretty. That's probably my favorite part about this whole section. So there we go. There it is. This is my biggest project to date. The finish size will be just under two feet by two feet. It is a big boy. 
So that was all of my stitching that I did this month, which, you know, to some people probably doesn't look like much and to some people probably looks, you know, decent. So the next time I see you guys, um, I want to have hopefully finished my March block on my calendar, my realist kit, done um, more sizable progress on my long dog, and then busted out the next couple of uh, patterns in my in my rotation. I don't know what they are off the top of my head. I like to be surprised, so <laughs> whatever, they're all in order, so whatever the next ones are, I just grab them and bust them out. And I have no haul to share with you. I've been, I mean, I know it's only February, or this is only my February update, but I have no haul to share with you which is, which was a goal of mine to have a, a buy ban and, and just stitch from stash whenever I finish a project. So, so far so good. If you have any questions at all about um, the projects that I've shown today or the books or anything at all, uh, I will have as much as I can linked down below in the description. But if you see something that you still want to talk about or ask about, feel free to drop me a, a comment. My email is listed in the description as well. So you can always send me an email too. And um, of course, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram. On Instagram, I post all of my quilting and stitching updates as well as just, you know, life stuff. All of the moth pictures that I take and my animals and my tattoos and yeah, all that. But I think that's all of it. I think that's everything. Thank you so much if you've stuck around to this part of the video. Uh, I think, unfortunately, for those of you who like longer videos, I think mine are going to start to be a little bit shorter since I don't have a haul section anymore. And that should say a lot about how much haul I had, how much shopping I was doing that it was a significant portion of my videos but yeah that's everything again if you want to check out my quilting video that should be posted soon and other than that i will see you guys at the end of march i hope you all have an excellent march and the start of your spring comes with fewer allergies than mine has and you know fingers crossed i get my stitchy rear in gear so that i have more to share with you guys Again, I'm sure like nobody is like disappointed in me. <laughs> I just like to be sure that when I film these videos, I have a significant amount uh, so that it's noticeable. And so you guys, you know, feel like it's worth it to watch a half an hour video, right? Is that just me? I don't know. But I will check in again with you in a month. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and I will touch you soon.